Good day, STAT students. Today we're going to talk about Section 8.2 and we're going to construct a confidence level for uh, one population proportion. So we got to figure out why are we creating a confidence level for proportion and figure out the particulars. All right, so we learned in 8.1 that any confidence level has a generalized formula, the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error, and that we can think of the margin of error as the critical value times your standard error. And so we kind of talked about some of these pieces parts with regards to uh, confidence interval for the population portion P and when you put them all together here's your formula for a confidence interval for P and so uh, we'll go through a specific problem and see how where we get all these values and and so on and so forth all right so here's a problem in 2020 a random sample of 100 adult Americans was taken and they were asked if they would be willing to pay much higher prices to protect the environment so the sample found 80 adult Americans that would pay more. Then it says find and interpret a 95% confidence interval for proportion or the percentage, if you will, of all the adult Americans willing to pay much higher prices to protect the environment. All right. So uh, here, the variable, the underlying variable that, you know, the, the thing that changes from person, you know, is willing, you know, are you willing to pay more to protect the environment? And that's a yes or no question. Think about it. You know, how would you answer that? Yes, no. And so that's categorical variable. And once it's categorical, how are we going to analyze it? We're going to analyze it with a proportion or a percentage. And so that's why we're working with the population proportion P here. It's because the underlying variable is categorical. Okay. All right. What about the sample? So the sample uh, we find out is 100... Uh, adult Americans, right? And so it says here, random sample of 100 adult Americans. So our sample, 100 adult Americans. So if that was our sample, what's our population then? Our population must be that it's all adult Americans, okay? So that's why we learned that back in, uh, you know, way back in, at the beginning of the semester. You know, here's our sample. What does that say about our population, okay? All right. Well, what does that mean about our sample size? So if we looked at 100 adult Americans, that means N, our sample size, must be 100. Okay? All right. And since our variable is categorical, all right, uh, that means we would work with successes and failures. And so remember, a success is just how it's being defined in the problem. It's not anything good or bad. Not anything good or bad. It's just how it's defined in the problem. And so what's a success here? Well, success. So, a success would be finding a person that's willing to pay more to protect the environment. Why? It's because we're trying to find the proportion of all Americans willing to pay more. And so that's how we define a success. And so that's a success for this particular problem. So if we find one person that, that's willing to do it, we have, one, we have a success. If we have find 70 people that are willing, we have 70 successes. Okay. So how many successes do we have here? Well, we found 80 that would be willing to do that. Okay, so X here, all right, is the number of successes, and that would be 80. Okay, and remember, when you divide that through by N, you get things like P hat. So the sample proportion here, P hat, is equal to X over N, X being uh, 80, and it, N is 100. Put that in your calculator, do that in your head, you get 0.8. And so what is that telling us? 80% of our sample is willing to pay more to protect the environment, okay? And so that's a good starting point. But do we expect that to match the population portion P perfectly? No, right? Because P hat varies from sample to sample. But we do expect it to be what? We expect it to be close, okay? All right, so here's our uh, formula again. And so notice that we have most of the stuff already. We have P hat, right? We have, here's a P hat, here's a P hat, so we have that, that, and that. We have N, okay? What don't we have? We don't have our critical value yet. And remember what our critical value is based upon. That's based upon our confidence level. And so notice what our confidence level is, 95%. And so I wanted to remind you of something here. So when our confidence level is, so when we're creating a confidence level for the population proportion, P, not mu, okay? So I put here, hint, this does not apply when creating a confidence level for mu. All right, so when we're going to have a 95% confidence level, what's our critical value? It's 1.96. That means we're going out 1.96 standard errors to create our confidence interval, okay? 
So when you see Z, critical value, you're going to be using one of these values here, okay? And it's all based upon the confidence level. And you're going to find out actually in 8.3 that you actually don't have to memorize these values. They're actually on, a, on another table, but you'll have to wait and see when you, when, uh, you'll have to check out 8.3 to see that. For right now, there's our table, okay? Let's move on. All right, uh, for every inferential technique, there are conditions or assumptions in order to use a certain formula, okay? So to create a confidence interval for the population portion P, we either need to take a random sample or the data has to come from an experiment. And so did we take a random sample? Well, let's take, take let's see. Uh, so a random sample, right? So there we go, so check mark, okay? Two, we need to confirm the central limit there. We've got to make sure that the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal. Okay? So, um, now, remember that in Chapter 7, we had to confirm that n times p was greater than or equal to 15, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 15. We can't use p here. Why can't we use P? Well, remember what the whole point is, is that we don't know the population proportion P, and we want to estimate a value for it. So uh, just like the standard error, we can't use it in the conditions either. So instead of using P, we use what? P hat. Okay. And so we just got to confirm both of these. And then as long as we confirm both of these, um, we're good to go. Okay. So let's confirm the first one. Now, let me do a little bit of algebra for you. And I'll do it right here. We found out that p hat is equal to what? x over n. Okay, we found it to be x over n. All right. And notice here, if I multiply both sides by n, you don't change the your equation. What happens to the n's on this side of the equation? They cancel, right? Notice what you're left with. n times p hat is just equal to what? x. So believe it or not, uh, all we have to do is check out the number of successes that we have. So all we, when we confirm that n times p hat is greater than or equal to 15, all we're looking up is making sure that x is greater than or equal to 15, the number of successes. Well, how many successes do we have here? We had 80. So we got one half of things done with regards to the central limit theorem. What about the second half? Well, if you, you can kind of do the same thing, but you have to distribute the n through the parentheses. And when you distribute the n through the parentheses, you get n minus n times p, p hat. Well, what did we just say n times p hat was equal to? x. So in all, it, really what we have here is that uh, the second half is n minus x, which is the, if you think about it, that's the number of failures. Okay. So if you had 100 people and you had 80 successes, what are you left with? You're, at, you're left with the number of failures. And how many failures do we have here? 20. And as long as that's greater than or equal to 15, the central limit there applies. And what is that telling us? That the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal. And we can use the formula that, that we're going to be showing you here in a little bit. Nope, oh, and there we go. Okay. Okay. So uh, here's, the for, here's the problem again, okay? And so we got a sample proportion equal to 0 0.8. Our critical value, I think we determined was 1.96. And so when we fill in the values for p hat, for the critical value, for your standard error, that's what you get. So I think probably the hardest part of this problem is calculating this right here, okay? Now keep in mind that, that this uh, p hat has to be a number between what, zero and one. Okay, because if you try to throw in a number greater than one here, it, it's going to give you an error because it's going to uh, then you have a negative number underneath a um, square root, and that's that's not good, right? So make sure that that you're calculating proportion here and filling it in here. It's got to be less than probably going to be less than one, right? Okay, let's calculate the standard error first because that's probably the hardest problem part of this problem. Okay, so here's uh, the standard error. All right. So get your calculator out, okay? So if you have a TI calculator, I'm just gonna assume most people do. I know some of you have a Casio and stuff like that, but it pretty much works the same. Put in your square root, okay? It's gonna give you your, your end parentheses here. So put in 0.8 times parentheses, one minus 0.8, okay? Close that parentheses. So when you close that parentheses, it's calculating 
this first. Okay, then it's going to multiply it by 0 0.8, then it's going to divide it by 100. And then your outermost parentheses here, what you're telling the calculator is that that's what you want underneath the square root. Okay? And so that's how you would put it into your calculator. And you're going to get, I think, 0 0.04. Okay? Uh, probably when you do these problems, it's not going to terminate perfectly. This one, this one did terminate nicely. I made the numbers come out that way. Uh, but um, a lot of times this number is going to be, you know, nine, you know, you know, eight, nine decimals long in your calculator. Just leave them all in your calculator, okay? And leave them all in there and then multiply it by whatever your critical value is. And here is 1.96, okay? Uh, I, I do that just in case that, you know, does web, web assign might ask you, well, tell me what the standard error is. That means you have to calculate this number separate, separately and put it into the computer. So, but if you leave all the values in your calculator and don't do any rounding and just multiply it by 1.96, you're going to get the very specific answer. Now, remember, when you multiply your critical value times your standard error, what do you get? You get your margin of error. So this is your margin of error for the problem. Okay, it's your margin of error. So you take your point estimate, subtract off your margin of error. You take your point estimate, add the margin of error, and there's your, there's your confidence interval. And what do we think is located in there? the population proportion P. So we think, so if, uh, if it asks for a percentage, you would just move this over two decimal places and you would say 72.16% uh, and 87.84%. If it asks for a proportion, you would just leave it like that. Okay, but so the procedure is exactly the same until you get to the end. So the final step is to interpret the confidence interval. And so what, how are we going to start? We're going to start with, we're going to say something like this. We are 95% confident that, uh, that the proportion of all adult Americans that are willing to pay much higher prices to protect the environment. So what is that? What that is, is that that is the population portion P. We're just saying it in words. Okay? And uh, hint, this will probably be stated right in the problem, that parameter. So let me show you. So here's the problem. It says find and interpret a 95% confidence interval for what? For the proportion of all adult Americans willing to pay much higher prices, right? That's P, okay? So all we're saying is that we're 95% confident that P being defined like that is what? Is between those two numbers right there, okay? So that's the end of uh, section 8.2. Thank you for your time.